Oh, hey. <laughs> Is that the one? <laughs> Green tea is the way. Welcome back to this part of the internet. It's a partly cloudy Sunday and I'm just hanging out. I have purple eyeshadow on and this cozy jacket I hope never dies. It will. It'll be a bad time when it does. And I wanted to make like a very cozy video. We throw that word around a lot on YouTube and I say we now as if I'm it's like I just invited myself to family dinner and people are like, how are we related? But we throw that word around a lot on YouTube and Twitch and stuff, and I get it. Even though I, like, I don't get it, like I'm used to talking about like clothes that way. There are things that I watch that are that vibe. Actually, I love watching someone review cozy games to play on the Switch, and it made total sense. Anyway, so I'm just gonna review a couple books that I have that I love. I was staring at my bookshelf and I was like, I love you guys. Let's talk about you. I'm going to be reviewing a couple books of all types that I've read and or used and loved and keep loving or recommend a lot. And I wish I had all the books from my whole life in this room. Well, not all of them, but there are so many books from the time before living in Oregon that I don't own. I think I brought one with me and it is in this pile, but um, I don't have them and that is such a bummer and there's so many reasons as to why I don't have them and I wish it was even a simple explanation. I guess there is a simple explanation, it's that I don't have them. Maybe someday I'll make a recommendation of like the best books of my life, like I'll make a video where I can talk about the books that aren't here in my hands and maybe someday I'll have those books again. But today we're just going to talk about some of the books that I own already. So maybe you're looking for recommendations or maybe you're just looking for the cozy vibes. That's why I made some tea. How do they take caffeine out of anything? I, I was a barista and I don't know that. I mean, I know the process, but I don't know how that process works. Get some yummy times and we shall begin. Okay, we're actually gonna start with the book that I brought with me to Oregon because it, it's probably my most treasured book. It's my signed copy of Bossy Pants. <laughs> I went to go see um, Tina Fey and Steve Martin interview each other. At the end, I, it's all kind of a blur, but I just remember that we were suddenly like in the basement and anyone who had a copy of their of her book with them could get it signed and like meet her. There she is. I've already been, even before this book, a huge, huge fan of memoirs. There was one summer, and I think I was like 17 or 18, and I read 50 memoirs. That's all I had to do that summer. They like rocked my world. I think that may have been where my faith was first challenged in, in terms of like opening up the world to me. So I just wanna bring this back to the mainstream because the way that she communicates about herself and the way that she communicates about life and her experiences, I just really appreciate. Okay, next is a similar kind of book, it's, it's, it's a memoir um, between two people, two people I currently love who are also not perfect and I don't ever expect them to be. Stay sexy and don't get murdered. Co-authored by the two hosts of the podcast, My Favorite Murder. Been listening to My Favorite Murder since I think really close to when it first began because uh, I heard about the podcast from someone I used to work for and he heard about it really early on, a lot of like certain circles were really upset that there was a podcast called My Favorite Murder and they, they never listened to it. They He turned to me one day when we were working and was like, Can you believe 
that there's this podcast. Can you believe that this exists? And I went, crazy. That sounds interesting. And I'm pretty sure I, I didn't say more words than that. Started listening to it later that day. I cried a lot. And because it's really honest, and I think that's what I like about it. I love that it's honest accounts of their life and their um, experiences behind who they are now and how they've come to be these people. And I think individual life stories are really important. Do I have more memoirs? <laughs> Just checking. So I have some smart people books. I call these smart people books because it feels like something I probably would have read in a college class. There's a lot of research in there. There's a lot of in-text citations and footnotes, that kind of thing. We'll start with like, I would say like the most complicated, but I loved it. And this is actually a recommendation from Jen M. She's here on YouTube if you've never heard of her. The Coddling of the American Mind. This was actually, I think, February's book club book um, from this year. I was mad at it. I'll be real. I don't know if the title also is a little bit uncomfortable to you. Are you like saying we're all weak? Are you saying we're like, are you saying, cause like, yeah, I guess we are. I was ready to be, to read this and get upset. Like I would get to, you know, halfway and be like, oh, that's the point you, oh. And I don't think it did that. It actually, it did challenge me. It did like give me a little bit of a attention headache sometimes. So this is actually talking about current college students and their ability to function in the world and what's attributing to people's okayness okay my other smart people book that is just like a little bit easier to get through and is way more popular and everyone knows about this so congrats on me for reading something that everyone's read atomic habits james clear is the daddy goat bay of getting your shit together if you in any way like to put it really simply need to get your shit together just read this take all your shit get it together it says an easy proven way to build good habits and break bad ones straight up that's like the whole human experience. It is really easy to read and I underlined so much of it and I had so many freaking thoughts. A little facty about the old Brooklyn. After I'm done reading, I open up like a Notion page and I write a book report. Yeah, there's so many bits of information going in my brain. I do myself a favor and I write book reports. Okay. Here's the other way to get your shit together. The body keeps the score. Again, I feel like I'm just talking about like really popular books, but this, this, I need to read it again, actually. I read this kind of quickly, but it is incredibly transformative. It says a pioneering researcher transforms our understanding of trauma and offers a bold new paradigm for healing. How we spend our time isn't just about like the best like time saving tips and like habit tracking. We can't do I think a lot of the stuff that James wants us to do and like the things he says to do until we talk about and start start understanding and processing like what kind of trauma we're holding and what is it made of? What does it look like? Where did it come from? Who are we? How does it shape who we are? It says trauma is a fact of life and that is exactly right. More tea, please. This is nonfiction, so I'm gonna do this next. This isn't deep, deep research based. It is storytelling while not necessarily being a memoir. I just finished it. It's Good Morning Monster by Katherine Gildner, an actual psychologist. This is uh, five stories from five um, patients of hers. She calls them heroes and a story of their journey through therapy. That sounds a little worrisome some people like how can you tell that their privacy is maintained i don't really know who the actual people are the people involved were involved in the writing of this so for people who have either been in therapy who are curious about therapy who were like what happens in therapy how could you not read stories of healing like real stories of healing and be the same it is rare to be able to see into those moments so intimately on a timeline that they didn't expect. They didn't know could happen. It's not a fairy tale, they lived it. I sing the praises of therapy all the time and this does the same. This one was weird and I loved it. This is how you lose the time war, okay? There's this review on the back and I agree. It's from V.E. Schwab uh, who wrote A Darker Shade of Magic. Holy shit, this was good. Same V.E. Schwab. So let me read you the premise of this because it is a, it fucks the brain. In the ashes of a dying world, Red finds a letter marked burn before reading. 
so begins an unlikely correspondence between two rival agents in a war that stretches through the vast reaches of time and space. Whoa, this is definitely not a beginner's read. It was incredibly challenging to me in terms of like the prose of it and like, oh, it was like a beautiful piece of art, like a beautiful story, but challenging as heck to like stay in it because it was like a force of wind crushing your brain the whole time. Like I'd read it and be like, what? This is magical and intellectual and sci-fi-y and romance-y and it's quick. Like it's definitely one of those like get it for like a little plane ride. You could probably crush it. Get it for a little plane ride. Speaking of masterpieces, good God, Cersei is litty like a titty. <laughs> Madeline, how, how dare you? Read this book, read this book. People have probably told you that. You've seen it on the bookshelf and maybe it had a little sign underneath that was like staff pick. And you're like, I don't need like mythology or like Zeus, like what is that? Get over that and read this. If you've never been into Greek mythology, cool. You're gonna love this. When people use the word transportive, I literally felt like I left my body. I like never ending story in myself. I, whew, I like when I page mastered into this, I out of the box into the painting to this book. It says keep you up all night page turner. That is exactly right. I also know people who listened to it and they loved listening to it. This one. Oh my gosh. Are you so ready for some, I have two more and they are so pretty. This one is literally called eat beautiful. <laughs> And I am going to admit, I bought Eat Beautiful without knowing who Wendy Rowe was, and I bought it because it was a pretty book. That's it. And then I read it. It's like a recipe book or a cookbook, so it's not necessarily like read it like page by page, which I do to recipe books and cookbooks and all those kinds of books. I agree that that is weird or out of the norm. But I learned a lot about food from this without it feeling too serious. It's this idea of approaching beauty from the inside. Beauty as in everything that we think is beautiful, whatever that is to you. I learned about amino acids from this book. <laughs> Wendy Rowe taught me about amino acids and quinoa. <laughs> and then the last thing um, that has been incredibly transformative to me is this book, What to Eat for How You Feel. I am no expert Ayurveda, Ayur, Ayurveda, Ayurveda, but what's really cool about this is that it's there to educate you. It doesn't assume anything. What I should tell you is that there are so many perks of eating this way because it's not a diet. It's sort of like understanding your body's needs first and then just how to nourish your body based on your lifestyle or like how active you are, how often you're sick. It's not the end all be all, but it's, wow, a very good place to start. That's it. That is my cozy video. I am genuinely cozy right now, and that's the goal. Comment below uh, what you are reading currently, if you like it, or something that you've read in the last year, or something that you've just read, period, that you think that I should read or listen to. I am constantly consuming information, fiction or non. It's who I am, it's who I've always been. Don't see an end in sight on that one. Have a cozy day.